YouTube Oz in the Goat House is back with an updated NFL mock draft after the conference championship games of the college football season. We are heading into week 14 of the NFL season, so using the current order. So a lot of changes since the last time we talked. A lot of guys solidifying themselves on uh, certain parts of the first round of the draft. So I'm excited to break it down here, 1 through 32. Uh, more of these to come, especially when we get in draft season. We have full in-season coverage for the NFL uh, here and on Twitter. Off-season coverage as well. So join us, like, subscribe, snow games on, follow us on Twitter. Links in the comments for that. Social media sponsors, Liquid IV, GLD Shop, code GOAT for both those sites. GLD Shop has some nice jewelry, always rocking their stuff. Uh, giveaway with them going on. Links pinned in the comments for that. Anything else you're looking for. So I kind of been on the Drake May train uh, right after the last draft, the 2023 draft ended. I had Drake May first overall. Got ripped for it. Now looks a little bit more likely. Caleb Williams could still go one. I see most people still mocking Caleb Williams one. I feel like it's more likely Drake May. I think he has more of NFL traits. Obviously, your prototypical size. Um, you know, I mean, he'll play hero ball at times too and try to force something. I, I view it in similar ways, uh, not as much, but similar ways as you know Josh Allen. Uh, but May is way further along as a prospect than when Josh Allen was a prospect. Um, you know, maybe some flashes of Justin Herbert as well with the arm talent. A um, lot of upside. Uh, I think he's going to be solid right away. Caleb Williams, maybe a little bit more. I mean, he's going to be talented right away because he creates. But, um, you know, just a little bit more of a project and how he's played against top deep the, the best defense I shouldn't even say top defense the best defense he's played some will question that some will question his size will he be able to get away with some of the things he gets away with right now some people will say well Justin Fields Caleb Williams they do some of the similar things they have some similar negatives as it is I think Drake May is the best quarterback I've been saying that for over a year uh, and I think the Bears want to run more of the yeah have that prototypical you know, pro style type quarterback of the future um, so that is the route with the Panthers pick that I think they would go uh, if the draft started today, which they would have the first pick again from the Panthers. Uh, second, then Caleb Williams to the to the Patriots, who have now have the second pick. They lost while the Cardinals won this past week. I think the Patriots would like if they had their current staff. I think they would like Drake May as well. But I think they, you know you also have to like Caleb Williams. Uh, it's a little bit different, a little bit different style of a quarterback. So maybe that maybe that's something that the, the Patriots, if Bill Belichick's still there, Bill O'Brien, that they're interested in. Uh, but a major upgrade, they've had a disaster at quarterback this year. I mean, between Mac Jones and Bailey Zappi now, it's been rough. So uh, if Williams went one, I think Drake May goes two. Uh, there's a lot of talk out, out there about Drake May, you know, Patriots, seeing a lot of those photo, the jersey swap photoshops. I think people are expecting it. I'm more of a expecting as of right now, and I've kind of been expecting it May to go one, Caleb Williams to go two in this scenario. Uh, number three, the Cardinals got to grab a receiver. I love the receivers in this class. I think we've been loving the receivers in every class. This one seems really good, especially at the top, with the top three or four. Marvin Harrison Jr. is obviously the one that stands out. I think going into the year, it's like far and away Marvin Harrison Jr., um, you know, now there's some guys like kind of give him some competition, not that they're going to go ahead of him, but Cardinals definitely can use uh, a receiver in there. Hollywood Brown going to be a free agent. They can use somebody anyways, you know, speedsters like Hollywood Brown and, uh, you know, Rondale Moore. I know they have Michael Wilson, but you just get a balanced do it all type receiver here for Kyler Murray third overall. Um, so that's what I have for Arizona Four, I'm going to go. I thought about this one. I, I really like Brock Bowers for the commanders. I've mocked that a bit before. Um, it depends on who the coach is. I kind of been thinking maybe they promote the enemy and have him as their head coach, but who knows? Cause now the offense is even playing well, but they, they need a lot. The, the commanders need a lot. They can almost go any direction here, but, uh, you know, they have a lot, a lot of sacks, a lot of them on Sam Howe, a lot of them on the offensive line. So, you know, grab the potential top tackle, you know, thought about, again, thought about the tight end Brock Bowers, thought about Fashanu and then Joe Alt, the Notre Dame tackle one with Fashanu here. Um, so Get Howell or whoever they find at quarterback uh, some protection. And then for the fifth overall pick, uh, I'm going to go Jared Verse for the Bears. It's a tough decision as well. I really, really am a big fan of the receiver class, but Roma Dunze could be my favorite player in the draft. I think it's a very safe pick with, with a lot of upside, a lot of potential. Um, you can do anything you ask from receiver. So I really thought about a Dunze here for the Bears receiver to pair with DJ Moore. I went with Verso. Verso's been, I mean, he's been on everyone's radar. 
um, you know, going into this year, but he is really tearing it up recently. The last few games, including the conference title game, the ACC conference title game. Um, so showing up in the big games, making big time plays, um, you know, collapsing the pocket, the bull rush is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, using the power, the speed, the length, he's got those NFL traits. The Bears spent uh, a big price on uh, Montez Sweat with the draft pick and, and the contract. So now you could argue because they already put too much, they already put so much value in that. Maybe they focus on other things here as very, very possible. But you have an expensive pass rusher. Now you get a cheaper one on a rookie deal, and you try. That if you're if you're trying to pair if you're trying to create like an elite or close to pass rush, pass rush or pass edge rush duo, that is the route. Obviously, no team wants to spend uh, elite money or top tier money uh, with two players at the same position, basically. So this would be the route, and that would be something. Montez Sweat and Jared Verse. Um, Again, really depends on who they bring in as a coach. If they somehow keep Ibram Flus, uh, most people think no. His defense is playing very well right now. But I'm just going to say I said that because the because Verse would fit the current uh, scheme. Uh, more than I, I, I would think more than Latu, but let's see who the coaching staff is. Um, but, yeah, tough one for me between Verse and Adunze, two different sides of the ball. Defense is playing pretty well. Could use offense more. They got the quarterback with the first pick. Um, so we'll see. Bears in a pretty good situation, though, for the draft with the, the two top five picks. Um, we'll see if they finish that way. Jets can grab their tackle. You know, the offensive line's been brutal, and it's been beat up at the same time. So they get Joe Alt from Notre Dame, who uh, could go ahead of Fashanu. You know, it feels like they both have a lot of upside because these guys, these are two guys that just popped them on our on our radar not really too long ago, you know, at some point last year. Um, Alt, a ton of upside, hasn't been playing the position a you know, long time. It's just... You know, obviously has that you know athleticism with the, the quickness of his footwork and the length as well. Uh, so he's kind of that guy that everyone's looking for. So the again tough call between him and Fashanu, but those seem to be the top tackles. But Latham from Bama is making his way up there as well. And a couple other guys, I suppose. But um, yeah, in this scenario, the Jets grab a tackle at six. Uh, pick seven. There's Roma Dunze, who I think has the potential to go top five. Goes to the Giants. Uh, you know, I think Jalen Hyatt, we saw last time they played, play, they kind of got him going. So that's one for the future, but kind of getting that sure thing, number one receiver that can do everything. That's what I love about Adunze. It's every time Washington's in a crucial situation, third down, fourth down, they need a touchdown here. They're running out of time. Adunze making a big time play, whether it's a contested catch, um, you know, just getting separation, you know, going across. I mean, they'll, they'll get him across the middle of the field, shallow route, screen passes, downfield, the back shoulder between him and Penix, pretty nasty. So yeah, do-it-all type guy. I see, like, pieces of other NFL receivers. Like, you know, um, see a little bit of DeAndre Hopkins in there. You know, he's got that wiggle to him, though, where he can get that, that separation as well. You know, so I, I'm a big fan of Roma Dunze. Giants looking for that legit number one receiver here. So he goes seven. Uh, and another receiver, the Titans go at Malik Neighbors at eight, who had an extremely productive year. And obviously he's been good in the past. LSU been pumping out those receivers. So that helps. Thought about Brock Bowers here. I think they would like him. They, I think they do like Chico Conquo, even though maybe he's been a little bit underwhelming this year. Uh, and a different, maybe a different style type tight end, so they can use both. But man, enough is enough with the receivers. Uh, they blew it by moving on from AJ Brown. Maybe they're trying to find that next AJ Brown. Um, you know, neighbors, you know, could be that guy here. So um, just enough messing around when it grabbed that receiver. They do need a tackle pretty bad, but those top two tackles gone. You know, again, thought about Bowers, thought about J.C. Latham from uh, from Alabama for tackles. So, interesting decision here. Get that receiver. Uh, nine, there it is, the Heisman Trophy favorite, I guess we'll say, Jaden Daniels from LSU. So, back-to-back -back LSU players. This is a tricky one, too, because some were worried about his frame. Obviously, very thin. We've been saying that since Arizona State. Remember that first year at Arizona State? He looked really good. It's like, okay, this guy might be a future NFL quarterback. He's just really thin. Um, so remember those games, his true freshman year, the Oregon game, um, you know, and then he kind of declined a little bit, you know, again, wasn't bad. Then he goes to LSU playing against SEC competition, tougher competition. That, that's a great sign that he goes to, from the Pac-12 to the SEC. I mean, look at a guy like Bo Nix, who's a, you know, 
you know, also a Heisman candidate. Really struggled in the SEC. Goes to the Pac-12, starts tearing up. Jane Daniels goes to the SEC, uh, and he's going to win the Heisman. He had a, stor- a historic season. That to me, that is huge. That's impressive. That means he's plays, you know, to his competition uh, or better than it, and he's kind of made for the moment. Still, yeah, thin. Uh, I think he's got to be a little bit bigger than when he first came in, but uh, you know, and he runs into a lot of contacts. So that's that's a big thing too. But um, we knew he can run. He looked even better as a runner this year. You know, being smart, knowing when to go, knowing the the, uh, the uh, correct path to take, can slip tackles. You know, showing the speed. Uh, we know you know he can throw the ball. But major improvement from last year. Remember Joe Burrow kind of came out of nowhere. He was pretty good that one year. Then the next year, like, like the best college quarterback I've ever seen. Uh, you know, not that I'm comparing the two, but just kind of the improvement. Uh, but specifically, I'd say with the ball placement downfield. You know, a lot of plays where he's dropping it in the bucket. It's just the amount of times I saw that, I was pretty pretty much wild from Jaden Daniels. So he's an interesting one. There's probably teams that would pass all together in the first round, but the Saints, and it's tough mocking the Saints too because I could see a scenario where the Saints fire Dennis Allen, bring in an offensive-minded coach, and insist on Derek Carr because they kind of put a lot of value, a lot of stock into him um, and maybe maybe grab a different position. Uh, it's, it's a possibility. It's a possibility, but... Uh, you know, stays stays home in uh, in, in New Orleans here and um, in Louisiana, and uh, it's a possibility if they're picking you know this early. So that would be pretty exciting. Uh, number ten, yeah, Brock Bowers. Maybe just too good to pass at this point. I talked about him all the way up at four. Thought about him all the way up at four with the Commanders. I do like the fit. Thought about him with a couple other teams, including the Tennessee Titans. So now it's kind of you know, is it the biggest need for the Bucks? You know, no, probably not. But you get a big time, rare tight end. You get better at the scenario. Could be looking for the quarterback of the future. Um, none worth this point. I, I think Quinn Ewers is going to come back. We'll see. I like I like Ewers probably more more than everybody. Um, so I think he'd be worthy of this pick. I think he's got a lot of upside. You know, seems like a guy that's going to have a better NFL career than in college. But he's been pretty good. Obviously, Texas in the playoff now. Um, so a tough situation here. Uh, Michael, people will say maybe, well, people maybe will say Michael Penix, uh, arm talent to me is top 10 worthy, but there's a lot of other factors, um, you know, there, a lot of injury in his, in his history He's kind of playing beat up right now. It sounds like, even though he's been playing great, some people worry about the, you know, the throwing motion or the release, uh, but the arm talent's definitely there. Uh, how will he be, you know, it seems like they scheme things up for specific receivers. He has the best receivers. So it might be like a Hendon Hooker situation. I think he has a little more talent than Hendon Hooker, but he, he's more likely to go early round two now. Uh, but Buccaneers in this scenario, this mock scenario, go at Brock Bowers. Uh, 11, Jerzon Newton to the Raiders. I think they could definitely use a guy on the interior, um, you know, inside Max Crosby to help stop the run a little bit better, get interior pressure. Jerzon Newton, uh, big-time disruptor on the inside. Illinois, uh, another another first-round Potentially another first round defender. Witherspoon last year has been tearing it up, and uh, they've uh, they've had other defenders obviously play very well recently. But uh, so the Raiders go for Newton at pick eleven, pick twelve. Aliatu Latu, who's arguably been probably been the best pass rusher of college football out of the draft prospects, or just in general this season. Um, this seems like a really good value here for him. He kind of slipped through a little bit. Big question will be: Will he go first? Will Jared Verse go first? Uh, I guess Dallas Turner probably could be in the in, in the con, um, conversation, the discussion. Uh, Latu had a monster year, though. Some impressive uh, moves off the edge. A lot of a collection of moves, too. Uh, using his length, the bend is very impressive. The spin as well. Uh, Chargers, maybe, maybe not the biggest need, uh, but Khalil Mack not going to be around forever. Joey Bosa, seem, it seems like the injuries pop up. so And it's just too good to pass on. Tremendous value here with Latu sitting there at 12. So that was my thinking there. Uh, 13, J.C. Latham is really rising. He was kind of a big name going into the year then. Kind of dropped down maybe a little bit, but he's been fantastic. I think he's going to be a really solid tech, right tackle in this case for the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, Jonah Williams, you know, a Bama tackle, uh, likely you know on his way out perhaps. So I uh, just could get better in, in, in this case as well. So the Bengals uh, able to uh, get a solid offense line and finally through the dra- early in the draft here at, at 13. 
14, the Bills go with Nate Wiggins, who is likely the top corner in the draft right now. You do you do have Kool-Aid McKinstry, who we'll talk about from Bama. Uh, Wiggins has been super impressive this year. I know Clemson had a down year, but their defense is very solid. They got the top recruits here for a reason. Uh, the Bills, yeah, they're, we're used to seeing the Bills with those cover two corners, the cover two guys on defense. Um, you know, Leslie Frazier takes a lead this year. They have McDermott calling the defense. They're trying to mix it up, especially earlier in the year. Uh, more man coverage, more cover three. That's kind of what I saw the most of. And it was weird because we're so used to the Bills, like cover two over and over again. Um, you know, but right now, and they're kind of running more cover two again because it just feels like they got the players to specifically fit uh, that that defense. And it's not the worst thing in the world. They got some pretty good players, but I think they're going to start looking for different, you know, good, use their their evaluations, which has been pretty pretty good. Like they're, they're, they're you know, talent of finding some good talent uh but get something a little different here and got you know Tredavis White is the injury concern you know kind of looking for a guy of the future they did bring in Rasul Douglas uh but I think adding a good corner he's very very he's been very solid in man coverage probably your best man coverage corner uh, I'd say for sure of this draft uh in Nate Wiggins from Clemson so thought that made sense get something a little different while getting better for the Buffalo Bills here uh, and then here's your other top corner, Kool-Aid McKinstry, who I do think can mix it up a bit, a little bit of uh, zone and man from Alabama um, in a top-tier defense and arguably the best defender on the, on a top-tier defense, uh, maybe the closest thing to an NFL defense this year perhaps, kind of Ben Georgia. But um, but I guess the way that they're coached and what, what type of defense they run um, – which makes sense there. So I think it would make sense for Vance Joseph's defense. But uh, yeah, I thought about multiple things here for the Broncos, but uh, they have one of the best in football in Patrick Sertan, uh, who also played at Alabama. But, you know, they're rolling with Fabian Moreau this year, which has he been all that bad? No. But just tr- completing that cor- maybe elite cornerback duo and just getting better at the position I thought made some sense uh, for the Broncos here at pick 15. 16. Uh, Talis Fuaga from Oregon State, who really wasn't on many people's radar at all going in this year, but he's been fantastic for Oregon State. In Seattle, their offense line was better than expected last year. This year, it feels like it's kind of worse than expected. Yes, they've dealt with some injuries, but I think they get better here and they get some insurance, which you don't draft him at 16 to you know, being just an insurance guy, but it kind of helps uh, that as well. You know, the guys that were starters become backups. Um, but yeah, I think they could do a better job protecting Geno. Um, you know, thought about multiple different routes here, but Fuaga is what I went with at pick 16 for Seattle. 17, yeah, Dallas Turner slipped through. We saw Latu kind of slip through a little bit. So for some reason, yeah, in this scenario, it kind of pushes back the edge guys a little bit. Dallas Turner's been fantastic for Alabama. Again, one of the better defenses, you know, one of the better players on that on that uh, elite college defense. Uh, you know, so the Rams pair him with Byron Young and just get that pass, really get that pass rush going here. Just uh, definitely a, another need, but just too good to pass, mainly. Just too good of a talent here at, at uh, 17 with what's at, on the board. 18, uh, Cooper DeGene uh, drops a little bit since the last time we talked, because of I guess because of injury, but Iowa's was another one of those. You know, this is probably you know clo- as close of uh, NFL defense you're going to get. I think mainly the way it's coached. A lot of zone coverage, which a lot of colleges do not want to run because they want to simplify things. You know, young athletic talent, which is run man coverage. It's not have you know these corners think a whole lot. But Iowa is just known for running a lot of zone and having those in uh, developing smart football players, especially on defense. Uh, and we've seen a lot of Iowa guys come out recently, especially from defense and not not just tight end anymore. Um, but yeah, DeGene is a really solid corner that can, you know, in my opinion, can play zone and man. That, that's the thing with some of the sometimes teams are a little scared with the <clears throat> the Iowa defensive backs. You know, are, like can they play man for us? Like that's kind of the worry. But uh, if, if we need him to, but DeGene, you know, can he's talented enough to do all of the above. He's out of a returner too. Um, so help you in the special teams game. So I, I like to fit with him and Jonathan Gannon's defense. Uh, it just seems like a really good fit uh, in his secondary. It's just exactly what he looks for. I think he's going to like the uh, smart, tougher corner that, that is already technically sound in, in zone coverage. So um, like that fit a lot at 18. Uh, 19, yeah, that was an interesting one. Another guy that slipped through. We're starting to see some of these guys slip through, and it shows a little bit, okay, this, this draft class might be pretty solid. Because uh, Keon Coleman has the the uh, chance to, to go in the top ten because he's a freaky, freaky dude. 
you know, big, you know, well built, super athletic, can go up and catch the ball, you know, contested catch ability, uh, big play ability, run after the catch ability, see him return punts as well. Um, he drops a little bit because other players on the rise, receivers on the rise, and he's been a little underwhelming recently, um, but still a player I really, really like. Um, you know, but sometimes, you know, has games where like one or two or three catches. You wish he would do a little bit more. Not the Falcons' biggest need, and they already have these big targets in Drake London and Kyle Pitts, but it's the type of guys they like, and they're 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 they control their own destiny and make the playoffs too. So Arthur Smith could be staying. Uh, if that's the case. So I, I think they'd be interested in Keon Coleman, you know, because they had those big tar- targets. They bring in Mac Hollins, who isn't Keon Coleman, obviously. Um, you know, they like those types of guys for a reason. Um, so, uh, uh, again, value pick, too. Value pick, too good to pass. They need a quarterback badly. This is a really good roster. It's why they're maybe going to make the playoffs right now. It's why they win some games. They have a really good roster. The defense is much improved. So they need a quarterback so badly, but none I thought worth the value. We've talked about Penix for the Falcons before. Just too many factors that I think probably keeps him out of the first round. Um, big time injury history up there in age. Uh, kind of dealing now, maybe not 100% now. He kind of looked like in the Oregon game. Uh, you know, going from that Washington system, that scheme to the NFL, a little bit different. You know, a lot different than Arthur Smith's maybe. Um, so that's kind of the question w- with him. So I uh, just want a value pick here, too good to pass on for Keon Coleman. It's something they like, too. It's something they like. Uh, 20, the Packers grab that safety. Cameron Kinchins from Miami. I thought about Minnesota safety. Tyler Newbin as well. I do like the fit there, but feels like Kinchins is likely the best safety in this class right now. Really good range on the back end. You know, um, sideline to sideline guy can make plays. You know, that Miami secondary was very solid, actually. They, you know, Another underwhelming year, perhaps, for them, but this was their, their strength, and it's because of a guy like Cameron Kinchins. So uh, the Packers... Definitely, you know, they're playing good ball right now, but they definitely can get better at safety. Um, you know, Savage is a guy that can play in the slot, and he can play, you know, free as well. Uh, obviously, they didn't have Amos this this year. Uh, you know, a little beat up. Yeah, they just get better in there in general, look out for the future. Um, you know, because is Savage going to stick around too? So some questions there. So they add Kinchins. They could look at offensive line. Uh, could look at corner because remember they trade Russell Douglas, but they got some steals later in the draft last year. So a million seventh round picks. I thought they did a very good job on uh, 21. I, this is the big surprise. I probably for people of the, of my mock um, the Vikings taking Braylon Allen. You could say you can make an argument against this pretty easily. I, I'm well aware. I'm well aware that Kevin O'Connell is a pass first guy. And maybe they just pass. They you know they're, they're not too worried about running back or they won't value running back in the first round. But I think Braylon Allen is a guy people should talk about more. Uh, and actually a couple running backs, uh, Benson from Florida State, Jonathan Brooks from Texas. I really thought about Allen and Brooks, both those guys here. Uh, but Braylon Allen is a guy that should be talked about more in the first round. People start you know, taking running backs less in the first round because it feels like the guy you took in the late first round or, or the third round, the fifth round, were pretty much the same style of running back, and you might be able to get the same production from either. Um, Braylon Allen is a different – he's different. Like, they're – it's not the same type of back. It's a guy that does not come around very often. Uh, not at all going to sit here and say he's going to be the next Derrick Henry, but if there was ever going to, ever going to be a rare, another, you know, in today's era that works, another Derrick Henry, this is probably your guy. Like, if there was going to be one. Uh, the Vikings have had a disaster, at, a borderline disaster at running back this year. Madison's been. He's had games recently where I've guessed he's ran okay, but he's been underwhelming. He's been underwhelming. He cannot punch the ball in the end zone. He has some fumbles. Just not that explosive. Ty Chandler looks explosive. They're not trusting him as a blocker right now. They don't like him as a starter every down back. He's, he's I want him to get the ball more. It's understandable, though. Braylon Allen is your every down back. He's a big, big guy. He can block for you. He can grind out those yards. He will punch the ball in the end zone. And what I love, what I love that Wisconsin is they brought more of a passing approach, finally, to their offense as probably going to pick up more as we go on in the future uh and that got Braylon Allen the ball more through the air uh so he kind of you know was he insanely productive through the air no but they got him going a little bit and he showed that he can do it he showed some upside so 
This is a different type of running back that I think needs to be talked about more in the first round. And I think the Vikings had him right now will say they'd be a lot better shape. They'd have like they would have a better running back. They'd have more touchdowns. They would have that blocking issue uh, on on you know pass protection from the backfield solved as well. So that was my thinking on that. Again, people will probably question it. Uh, you know, I get I I'm not really disagree, going to disagree with you. I thought it was interesting. I thought it was a, it was a uh, legitimate thought here, uh, consideration here that they could could go this route i do like the texas back like i said uh you know jonathan brooks but um i like his pass catching ability quite a bit so there's some running backs that can be a little sneaky um i'm kind of excited about the running back class next year too looking at some of these guys i'm a big Amari and Hampton fan from North Carolina. Ollie Gordon looked like a stud from Oklahoma State this year too. So those are guys, you know, for next year. So I'm already getting ahead of myself there. Uh, 22, uh, Colts get a rising corner here. Terry and Arnold from Alabama. The, the Alabama defense in general, again, probably the, it's been Georgia, but probably Alabama, I think, the closest. You know, big reason why they're in the playoff. Closest to an NFL defense here. Arnold's been a guy that's really helped this stock. Um, a lot of times he's maybe looked better than uh, McKinstry, who's more of the well-known name. We'll probably go earlier, but um, yeah, Bama mix it up with the zone and man too. The Colts they got some young corners, but I think they'll be looking for another one here. Uh, they do give up a bit through the air. Uh, I, I think specifically dealing with some of those veteran, you know, like possession, you know, good contested catch, you know, physical, smart receivers. Um, so adding another guy there on the outside for, uh, on defense uh, makes a lot of sense to me. 23, you know, no back-to-back corners. We got our Penn State corner for the Pittsburgh Steelers, pairing with Joey Porter, Kill and King. Um, you know, Penn State really set, underwhelming year, but a very solid defense. Um, uh, King had his hands full at Marvin Harrison Jr. He definitely got the best of Kill and King, but... Other than that, you know, really good year last year, really good year this year uh, at time. You know, you could argue better prospect than Joey Porter Jr., you know, not as big of a name, but actually could be. So uh, Patrick Peterson not going to be around forever, you know, aging, declining veteran. Um, so pair of the Penn State corners in Pittsburgh uh, together. Uh, made some sense. Pretty good value here at 23. 24, Xavier Leggett. I-, I love this fit. I really love this fit, by the way, for the Texans, uh, the South Carolina receiver who is – he had a really good year, uh, and he is nasty after the catch. Like, could he be like another, you know, AJ, the, what A.J. Brown does after the catch, and then, uh, you know, maybe that style player. Uh, possibility, possibility there. But I love this fit because I, I'm, I really like where the Texans are heading. I like how they're playing right now, but this is kind of what they're missing here. Like, uh, D'Amico Ryan's got that defense ball, and yeah, sure, they could, could they add a linebacker, you know, maybe, but they got some young guys stepping up there. Offense, you look at offense. I look at Nico Collins really broke out this year. He's kind of a possession uh, contested catch, you know, downfield receiver. Uh, Tank Dell, you know, that separator, that speedster. A lot of his action is downfield. He's currently injured from uh, what's today? Say Monday, yeah, from yesterday's yeah, Sunday in week 13. Um, and, and, you know, so go get the guy like the the tough guy after the catch. I mean, that is perfect, like exactly what that Texans offense needs to you know, take that next step. I think that's, that staff, I think that's what we'll be looking for, that we'll be looking for to that style receiver. It's exactly what they're missing to elevate that offense even more. So I absolutely love this fit. And I have back-to-back receiver fits that I absolutely love. I love Jalen McMillan with the Kansas City Chiefs. The receiver unit besides Rasheed Rice has been very, very underwhelming, which Rasheed Rice is a rookie. So um, he's been solid. You know, he kind of just you know, give him a screen pass. He, he, he get downfield too. He just gets open pretty solid, pretty damn solid after the catch. Um, but kind of give him the ball anywhere. McMillan, uh, we, we, you know, almost forget about him a little bit in that, uh, PAC 12 championship game, which is a huge game against a good Oregon defense. He tore him them up getting separation downfield, big play ability. And you remember, cause he's been hurt and you remember like, okay. Yeah. I remember last year, like this guy was supposed to be the guy, um, and they have three guys. We talked about Adunze uh, early in this one, and Polk very well could find himself around this range as well. But, you know, you kind of remember, like, okay, McMillan's a stud, and I feel, feel like it's a Patrick Mahomes, you know, Chiefs-type receiver that they, they could definitely use and definitely are missing. Um, so I really enjoyed watching him in, in that title game, uh, and I do love the fit there. We have a lot of receivers going in this mock. Uh, but another Washington guy, so three Washington guys. Uh, Braylon Trice, it seems like a Jacksonville Jaguars guy. I mean, a big, big, physical, lengthy pass rusher here for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, 
you know, they they want those guys. They want those guys that are like equally effective getting after the quarterback and stopping a run. So here's one here with Braylon Trice, you know, kind of upgrade uh, that uh, or help that pass rush because it could be helped a little bit more. They got to extend Josh Allen, uh, obviously their stud, their star pass rusher. Um, so 26, another Washington Husky there. 27 go Brian Thomas Jr. So another LSU Tiger, uh, third one of this mock. And we left some out that were borderline, some of the defensive linemen. Uh, Brian Thomas Jr., and we knew about neighbors, but uh, Thomas Jr. Was, has been fantastic as well. So LSU, again, LSU just keeps developing and pumping out those, those receivers. And uh, Cowboys receivers are good. I mean, Michael Gallup is very underwhelming, but CeeDee Lamb's a star. Brandon Cooks has really been taken off lately. He's not a guy that's going to be around forever. Uh, they definitely can use... <clears throat> another uh, piece here for the future. So I thought that made some sense. You know, not a lot of obvious holes for the Cowboys. Uh, 28 Lions. I thought about corner. Uh, I thought it would have been a little bit of a reach for a corner here. So I went with Chop Robinson, Penn State pass rusher. Uh, you know, very solid. One of the top guys in a solid Penn State defense. I, I still think it's a need for, for, for the Lions off the edge there because where they're still specifically kind of weak is uh, holding that end, edge. You know, keeping contain out there. Um, you know, because I think Hutchinson's a very, very good player. A lot of his work is inside using him on stunts, you know, kind of scheming things up for him. So uh, getting another uh, edge rusher that maybe can hold the edge opposite of him, I, I thought made some sense there uh, with the Lions landing uh, Robinson for Penn State. 29, uh, Tyler Newbin, the Minnesota safety for, for San Francisco 49ers. I think it's a pretty solid fit. Um, Newbin's been very solid the last two years. Uh, really stepped up even more this year. I think as... In terms of play speed and range, you know, getting you know downfield, uh, cross field, downfield, downhill, making a play on the ball, like being more of a playmaker. Um, I like this fit for the Niners too because it feels like well now Hufunga's hurt, but it felt like they had two in Wilkes's defense. You know, not Ryan's defense, but Wilkes with their defenses now. I felt like they had two strong safeties out there, and sometimes they got to put Hufunga way back and. He's really not the most rangy, like, coverage guy in the back end. So, Newbin, who really progressed, is that. And um, at first, you know, in Minnesota, I thought he could be, like, a strong safety. So, having that versatility as well, in my opinion, but more of a free safety could help the Niners here, um, you know, at uh, at pick 29. I was told, actually, in the offseason, I don't know if it was ever reported as news, but I was supposed to keep it quiet. Um, but, yeah, Newbin was, in the offseason was – Try to get they try to get pulled away from Minnesota by Alabama and Notre Dame, so it shows well, like the high level like schools what what the high level talent of availability that actually thought of him, and then he had to end up having a a monster season. So um, that's a guy to look out for there. Uh, Thirty uh, Adane Mitchell, who I thought about him a lot earlier. I mean, he was good at Georgia, very solid at Texas. I mean, lengthy, you know, good size, speed receiver, can make that contested catch, catch the ball downfield, tearing it up for Texas. Ravens, it feels like every time we're talk, during drafts, we're talking about receiver for the Ravens, but we're going to have to do it again. We're going to have to do it again because um, Zay Flowers looks very solid. A lot, you know, chunk of his plays from the slot, chunk of his plays, you know, gadget type plays, even though he can do more. Uh, OBJ not going to be around forever. Go get that outside receiver that can really help you. Um, so I thought that made sense here at pick 30 for the Ravens. Uh, 31, you know, a lot of good interior defense alignment still on the board at this point. Um, you know, a couple from LSU. Um, there's quite a few, obviously. But Byron Murphy, the second from from Texas, has been. There's a you know, obviously a couple of Texas guys, uh, but he's been intriguing to me this year because well, not just because he's been productive, but productive in the play style, like where they have him aligning. Um, both like fairly based on what I've watched, fairly equal in the A and the B gap. And then, you know, so for him to have that production when he's not like just set on playing the B gap or, you know, three technique, like he's not specifically in one spot to get going and he's not in a spot that gets you more pressure. He's moving around. He's playing in the A gap a bit as well and he's getting that production. So I thought that was impressive. The Dolphins don't like desperately need an interior defense lineman. Obviously they have Christian Wilkins. They have some other guys, but, um, I thought it was an interesting fit and pick here for the Dolphins at 31. Uh, and then 32, a guy that's caught my eye this year uh, has been Peyton Wilson from NC State. Um, you know, their linebacker. And the Eagles haven't really valued linebacker, and Howie Roseman could still 
that could still be part of his philosophy, his thinking, whatever, very possible. But they've really had to scramble for linebackers, and they actually just signed today Shaq Leonard. That's awesome for the Eagles. Not going to be a guy that's around forever. Will he end up fitting? You know, He was really good when he was healthy, but mainly in that cover two scheme. The Eagles actually haven't been running many co- much cover two at all. So will it end up being a fit? Will they sign him long term? Who knows? Who knows? I don't know if they want to pay a lot of money at the position. I think they're more likely to draft one, but they've been scrambling a little bit. Uh, so this one makes some sense. I love the size on Peyton Wilson. He's a high motor, high energy guy. Seems like sideline to sideline, get in the backfield. It's all over the place. It's really fun to watch. Uh, pretty damn athletic for his size as well. NC State's been kind of getting, you know, pumping out some decent linebackers too. This is their best, going to be their best one in in a bit. Um, he actually reminds me, and he reminds me of a in terms of a prospect. Well, just. It's, Jack Campbell still, is still kind of a prospect. A much better version of Jack Campbell, who, surprisingly, but he went in the first round last year, but I think a better version of him. I see some similarities there, more strengths. Um, you know, got that length, got that that height, that size. Um, pretty good in coverage with, like, kind of reading the quarterback, and uh, that, that's kind of where he's similar, similar. But I think he has more strengths, more, like, definitely more wow uh, than Campbell. So, I, But I saw some similarities there. So maybe the Eagles could finally value the position. is. In this case, the 32nd pick. I'm not predicting a Super Bowl with this. It's just the current order. So nobody should be complaining about that. But uh, So that's what I had. So felt really good about this mock. Uh, way better than the last time around. Like now that we know more and more about these guys, kind of get an idea who's going to declare. Maybe some of these guys go back after. The, by the time I'm done talking. You know, we'll see. Transfer portal stuff is heating up. It's... It's weird. It's it's you know, but it's entertaining. It's definitely entertaining. But we got you guys covered with everything here on the channel and on Twitter. So check us out there. Like, subscribe to notifications on uh, weekly coverage. Hopefully, you can join us. Uh, check out our sponsors links pinned in the comments. Code goat. Whether you want to use it, use it. Liquid IV or the GLD shop. It's gonna do it for this one though. Thanks everyone for watching. Goodbye.